Hey everyone, welcome back. I am Jen Sorensen and in today's video, this is something that I've been wanting to talk about for a while and that is something that's been actually fairly new to me over the last, I want to say, three years. Three, four years. And that's face binding, as you can tell by the title of the video. Face binding, you can see here, is when you actually don't see the binding on the front and it is all on the back. So let me bring this up a little bit closer so you can see here and you, you can kind of see, don't mind seeing through the quilt a little bit. But anyway, the, when you do a face binding, you can't see anything on the front. It just creates this really nice seam on the side and then you can see it on the back. I love faced bindings for matchstick quilted quilts because there is so much texture that matchstick quilting, when you put a binding on, it can kind of take away from that texture. And let me show you what I mean by that. I did the very first quilt that I matchstick quilted. I put a regular binding on. And let me bring this closer to you to see. So you see just a regular binding, but it distracts from the actual texture. You know, from afar it's fine, but I see that binding and I don't want that texture. The other reason that I like to do face bindings is when I have a lot of colors. You can see right here, I have a lot of colors and I don't want to disturb all of that. So I want to keep this really clean and I don't want to frame it out. I want to let the colors of the quilt speak for themselves. So that's really why I liked face bindings. The other reason I like it is because with this quilt that I'm about to, you can see how oh, I just threw that down. With this quilt that I'm about to bind, I use fabrics in my stash and I don't have enough of any of them to really make a binding out of it. So I'm going to use a blue that's very similar. It looks close, but it's not quite the same as the solids in here. And I also didn't want to frame it up with that dark navy. So to do that, because I didn't want, I didn't have like the background or the yellow as example left, it's going to allow me to bind this and finish off the quilt without it being distracting from the overall design. So I'm gonna bring you down to my cutting table, my sewing table right here, and I'm gonna show you how I make my faced bindings. Okay, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna measure the length of our quilt. And I know that this is 36 inches based on the length of my mat right here, just, you know, just about 36 inches square. So I can measure that, you can see it goes right to the end. I'll slide this so you can see, there we go. <laughs> oh, we've got a sophisticated setup here, guys. Anyway. I know that this is 36 inches square. The great thing about that is I can just use with the fabric strips. So I am going to take three inch strips here. I have made these and you can see here three inches and I've made four of them. I'm not going to attach them. So I have one and you can see here that I folded them in half and ironed them. One for each side, that came off the wool ironing mat, a little fuzzy. So I have four pieces right here. What I am going to do is I'm gonna sew them with this fold side, so the raw edges, not the, this is the fold side, the two raw edges here. I'm going to sew to the front of the quilt. This is gonna be the exact same way almost that you would for a regular binding, but I'm going to sew this down and I'm going to go from the edge here of the quilt, the edge of the quilt, all the way to the other edge. And now what I like to do is cut mine a little bit bigger, sew it on, and I just did with the fabric here. So I've got this extra. I'm gonna sew this and then I'll trim this off after. I'm gonna do this to two parallel sides. I'm gonna do to this side. I'm not gonna to touch this side right here and I'm not going to touch this side right here. I'm going to sew it to this one and I'm going to sew it to the opposite one. 
Then I'm going to come back and I'm going to show you what we do with the other pieces. Okay, I am back and I have sewn a strip to the top of this quilt and the bottom. So I will show you this way and you can see the entire length of two sides, so two parallel sides. Now I am going to put the next two strips on the other two sides, but I'm going to move it in and give myself about probably half an inch from the end, so about a quarter inch from where I sewed. Let me show you what I'm talking about here. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to place it about a half inch from the end or about a quarter inch from where I sewed. So you can see the flap here. And I'm gonna do that on the entire length of the quilt. So I am going to cut this about half an inch in. So that's what I'm going to sew right now. Okay, so I'm gonna do half an inch from this side, half an inch from that end. I'm going to sew it on both sides and I'm going to bring you back down to the table here. I'm going to show you exactly what I mean. Okay, next step is I have my next one here and you can see it's folded. So I'm going to take the raw edges and I'm going to line it up along the edge of the two, side, the two sides that do not have any binding on it yet. I am lining it up right here about half an inch away from the edge. So let me put this down here. You can see I am about a half an inch, so about a quarter inch from where I, the seam line is. And you can see I like to back stitch a little bit on the end here. You don't have to. So I'm going to line this up half an inch from the edge. Again, there's, there's the edge right there, half an inch. And now I'm going to, let's, let's pin this down just so we can, I don't always do this. I'm going to pin this. Again, the fold is on the inside towards me. So I'm going to kind of line this up. And you have some wiggle room here. Like you don't have to be super duper accurate, which you guys know me by now. I don't like being super duper accurate. So I'm going to bring this down here and I'm going to put another pin in down on this edge. And I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to cut this, you can see, about half an inch from the edge of the quilt. So I'm going to sew this now, again, quarter inch seam. I do like to do a little back stitching here as well. I'm going to do that on both sides. And I will come back here and show you how we finish this off. All right, I have all four of my binding, face binding pieces on. What you're going to do is you're going to take the last two pieces that you sewed on, and these are your shorter ones. Your shorter ones here, you're going to take them, iron it flat, and then we're going to iron it and kind of use our fingers to push the binding all the way to the back. And you want to really do what you can to try and get a nice, flat seam. So you don't want to be able to see the binding from the back. And it's going to be somewhat thick in the, in the back here, which is why I love using a nice contrast to the back. It kind of frames it out. So you're going to do that. And you're going to sew, hand sew, all of this to the back on both of your shorter sides first. Um, one of the things I love to use are these jumbo clover clips here because they really cover a lot of the back of the binding. You're going to do the two and you don't always need to use an iron. I like to when possible, but I'm just going to kind of do all of these and let me show you a little bit here towards the end. So I'm just going to kind of Sew and hand sew all of this to the end using your favorite stitch that you like to sew your bindings. This is not the best to do some sort of a um, machine stitching because you're so far in right here, unless you, got, you want to do something funky. Then you're going to take your longer ones and you'll notice that this has been sewn 
together from the other binding. That's why when you sew these, you need to sew all the way to the end with that second piece. Then we're gonna flip this inside out. You may wanna trim this just a little bit. Like I may take some scissors and just cut the corner a tad, just an itty bitty bit, just to reduce some bulk. So we're gonna have this, pretend this is already sewn down. We're gonna have that sewn down and we're gonna flip this and really kind of push that corner. Do what you can to manipulate it a bit, which, you know, I'll work on that a little bit. And then you can do the same thing for the other side. So it works really well right there. And you don't have to worry about matching anything. And it's gonna look really nice on the back. Now the back, you're gonna have these straight lines here. It's not gonna be a mitered back, but that's okay. Don't worry about that. Just sew that down the entire way and it's gonna look really nice. Okay, let's summarize this, kind of do a really quick recap before you guys go off and try this yourself. You're gonna cut three inch strips, iron them in half. You're going to sew two of them to parallel sides all the way from end to end. So you're gonna sew them from end to end. One end to one end. Then you're gonna do about half an inch shorter on both ends for the other two sides. So that all the way across, like even past the start and end. So I've got my start and end of my shorter piece right here. I've still sewn all the way to the top. So we're gonna do that, put the raw sides together. You've got all four of those in, you're then gonna sew, you're gonna iron back the tops of your shorter sides first. Hand sew that to the back, and then you're gonna do the longer side. And you will have this great faced binding right here. So if we look at this quilt right here, you're gonna see that it just looks clean. It looks you know, sophisticated. And the back is going to look really nice as well. In this case, these are so not my colors, but I love it anyway. But you've got this nice thick frame almost around your entire quilt. You could almost reverse this and do it the opposite direction if you wanted this really thick frame on the front of your quilt. But in general, this is a really nice way to get a clean edge on your quilt. And it's a great way if you don't have matching binding fabric or you wanted you know a lot of detail that you don't want to be distracted by overall i love a face binding i hope you do too i hope this made sense i know it was a little tricky with that really dark fabric i probably should have used something else but again i'm trying to use what's in my stash so i want to know from you have you tried face binding before and if so do you love it or do you prefer a traditional binding let me know in the comments down below. If you try this and have questions, ask away. I'm here for you. I want to see you succeed. Until then, though, I hope you get out there and create something absolutely beautiful. Have a fantastic day. I will see you real soon.